President Barack Obama saves his most poisonous attack for last, makes this big problem even worse. There are many who believe that Barack Obama is going out of office as a race-obsessed bomb thrower. The post-racial president who started his first administration by publicly branding white police officers as acting stupidly, quote-unquote, after they questioned an African-American friend of his in connection with the possible break-in. However, now Obama is ending his second administration as U.S. president with the argument that may well become the most poisonous of the Barack Obama legacy and the cancerous conceit is likely to last longer than any other of the past eight years. On a series of interviews with Ta-Nehisi Coates, who is one of the best and most radical writers working today, Obama cemented the liberal doctrine that the Republicans who fought him politically and Americans they represent are actually racists at heart. That's what Obama believes. Obama didn't come out and use a word, of course, but he didn't have to. Any reader who managed to plow through Coates' novella-length meditation in The Atlantic couldn't help but make that connection and that conclusion. Being Obama, he had to prevent and pretend he was saying something else at first during the discussion of Republican opposition to progressive plans like, for example, Obamacare. President Obama told Coates that he had no doubt that some opposition to federal government overreach was based on conservative principles. He said in a piece published on Tuesday, quote, and so I'm careful not to attribute any particular resistance or slight or opposition to race. Then again, Obama, being Obama, couldn't resist his instinct to play the race card, and he gutted that statement entirely. Quote, but what I do believe is that if somebody didn't have a problem with their daddy being employed by the federal government, and didn't have a problem with the Tennessee Valley Authority electrifying certain communities, and didn't have a problem with the interstate highway system being built, and didn't have a problem with the GI Bill, and didn't have a problem with the Federal Housing Administration subsidizing the suburbanization of America, and that all helped you build wealth and create a middle class. And then suddenly, as soon as African Americans or Latinos are interested in availing themselves of those same mechanisms as ladders to the middle class, you now have a violent opposition to them. Then I think you at least have to ask yourself the question of, how consistent you are and what's different and what's changed, end quote. And just gave the, the presidential imprimatur to what was going to be the argument liberals throw at conservatives, not for the next four years of Donald Trump administration, but for the rest of the 21st century. That's assuming that we don't have a third world war putting an end to humanity. Of course, Democrats have been trying to make the case for deep-seated racial bias for many years. Obama himself has left all the dirty work basically for his minions in politics and the media. He recently told CNN that as president, as US president, he's been the victim of racism. And he suggested it's woven deeply into the fabric of American society. Now he's on record in an interview with the best-known black writer of his generation, blaming political opposition to his presidency on the color of his skin. How else, in Obama's mind, could one explain why his programs and policies, policies have been hailed as welcome balm for a country in desperate need for his healing touch? Here's a news flash for the president, Obama that is, and his progressive friends, Conservative opposition to government programs, particularly the Tennessee Valley Authority, has been around as long as those prog programs have been around. Being a liberal, Coates also said that the rise of the Tea Party in 2009 to Obama's race, somehow he even imputed racism onto the legendary rant by CNN's Rick Santelli on the floor of the Chicago Board of Trade, inspiring the movement. Quote, Race was implicit in Santilli's harangue. The housing crisis, the predatory lending, had devastated black communities and expanded the wealth gap, 
and it culminated in the call for a Tea Party to resist the Obama presidency. So the key words most people remember about that rant, other than Chicago Tea Party, were Santilli's conclusion that you can't buy your way into prosperity. It's exactly what Obama was trying to do at the time with the, fa the fabled stimulus of $700 billion in federal money thrown away because those shovel-ready jobs weren't really there. And he's been trying to do that for eight years since. However, Obama, Ta Nahesi Coates, and other liberal clinging to the progressive gospel oppose the idea that the government doesn't exist to take care of its citizens, rather to protect the rights they enjoy as Americans. Is racism, Jim Crow writing again. The worst part of all this is that at 55, President Obama is going to be a relatively young man for an ex-president. Given that the family plans to remain in Washington after leaving the White House because his second daughter, his uh, youngest daughter, still has to finish her school there, he obviously doesn't expect to be far from the public eye. With Obama unbound by the decorum demanding demanded by the presidency, statements like the one to Coates blaming all opposition to the progressive agenda on racism, of American whites are likely to be even more common and inflammatory. During the past 35 years, America has been afflicted with a moralizing, speechifying, book writing, globe trotting, democratic ex president named Jimmy Carter. For the next 35 years, it could be a smug, bomb throwing one as well, that is, ex president Obama. This is on Western journalism. I'll leave a link below for you for this.